tandem also uh, helps with the sensor readings and goes up and down as we discussed. There are different thresholds for different glucose levels, um, but it basically uh, always takes the, uh, the whatever is set by your clinician in terms of the basal rate. So, um, so if, if your basal rate is not enough, for example, uh, uh, at, at night, the moment your blood sugar starts going up, let's say you go to bed at 10 o'clock and your blood sugar starts going up at 11, your tendon pump will still be able to correct that because it estimates that your blood sugar is going to be keep going up and it keeps giving you more insulin. But, but the cycle continues to happen uh, pretty much every day. So I think um, from the basal standpoint, uh, both pumps get the job done. It's just a technical uh, difference that I see there. Um, now, the third thing we can talk about is the insulin, um, active insulin time. Uh, now, that is modifiable with uh, Medtronic. Uh, and, and to be honest with you, based on the insulin that you are using in the pump, and based on um, uh, your personal uh, active insulin time can be different. So sometimes uh, Novolog, for example, can last four hours for one person. It may not even last three hours for another person. Um, so as a result, you know, change, being able to change that uh, even in the auto mode is, is, is I think, a good feature. Uh, on, on, on tandem side, that is uh, not modifiable. It is set at five hours. And I think they did that as a, as a safety feature bec uh, because they are giving insulin bolus. Remember that Medtronic does not. So when Tandem gives an insulin bolus uh, on top of what you already have given, um, they want to prevent something called insulin stacking. Uh, so as a result, active insulin time is more uh, put as a um, more like a, 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 a safety feature. Uh, on the other hand, you can of course change your sensitivity factor anytime you're not in the uh, auto mode. So in this in this case, they call it a control IQ. Uh, so there's some confusion between, um, you know, the terminology they use, uh, but the bottom line, they mean the same thing. They're all called closed loop systems. A sensor talks to your pump, uh, bottom line. So Medtronic calls that 670G, um, uh, closed hybrid loop system, uh, and the tandem calls that a control IQ. So, uh, what else we have? So, um, in terms of modifiable factors, we talked about the sensitivity factor. We talked about uh, so the the other thing that we uh, uh, we mentioned in the beginning uh, that your your set blood sugar is 120 versus versus it changes in tandem pump. Uh, it has different thresholds like 112 to 160, 160 to 180. Uh, below 112 and below 70, Tandem will make different changes based on the incoming data. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, uh, we will also talk about the exercise settings that the Tandem has uh, all, as well as sleep settings. So uh, as you know, when you're sleeping, you're more sensitive to insulin. And then when you're exercising, uh, you also are more sensitive to um, um, the insulin. So uh, on the other hand, everybody wants to wake up with a nice blood sugar. So Tandem thought about this and they came up with a, a sleep profile and you can auto set that. You don't have to push a button every time you go to sleep. So if you're sleeping from 10 to six every day, you can actually uh, put that in your pump as a sleep setting. Uh, so everybody's sleep is different. So, uh, but what the uh, Tandem does here is that it actually reduces your 160 threshold uh, to 120 for the high. Uh, just because when you are sleeping, it's a lot easier to control your blood sugar because you are not really active, which affects your blood sugars. And uh, you are also uh, not eating, which also affects your blood sugar. So it's more of a stable environment. So as a result, keeping your blood sugar uh, right at 120 uh, is easy for both Medtronic and the Tandem. Uh, to be honest with you, with any any pump or, uh, or a closed loop system, it will be a lot easier when somebody's sleeping. Now, um, Medtronic doesn't have uh, the sleep pattern, uh, but they have it set at 120, which is very similar to tandem pump. So I think there's uh, not much difference there. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, having a sleep pattern for tandem 
can help you wake up with uh, better blood sugars, in my opinion. Um, now, on the other hand, the exercise is important because a lot of people are scared that the blood sugars sometimes go really high, sometimes uh, crash out later uh, after the exercise. Uh, so when you're exercising, basically your tendon pump uh, will allow your blood sugar uh, to be at 120. So instead of um, keeping your uh, normal uh, steady uh, basal rate, uh, between 112 and 160 blood sugars, your tendon will actually only start giving you more basal insulin if you go above 140. Again, that is a safety feature because when you're exercising, your body uses glucose, and if you get a lot of insulin, that can definitely cause a low blood sugar. Uh, so I'm glad that the tendon thought about this and uh, they increased their uh, uh, basal insulin uh, delivery rate at 160. And it will actually cut down on the insulin uh, uh, if you're going below 140, uh, which uh, is important because if you're exercising and your blood sugar is going below 140, it is, uh, it is just a matter of minutes sometimes for you to find yourself at down to 50. So as a result, I think it is an important feature that start cutting the insulin uh, when you are going below 140. Again, remember your blood, your blood glucose is going down due to exercise anyways. So I think that's a good important feature. Now with Medtronic, you are still set at 120. Um, although uh, what Medtronic does, it will, um, it, you, can, you can set your um, low setting if you're a very avid exercise person. You can set your low glucose setting a little bit higher, uh, which is modifiable with the Medtronic sensor, which is not modifiable with the Dexcom that works with Tandem. Uh, so you can always say, okay, well, I don't want to go low, so I'm going to set my uh, low threshold at 80 and your um, or 90, uh, and then your pump will start cutting back on your insulin uh, right around 110. Um, uh, and if it goes really down fast, uh, it will totally cut your insulin off. Uh, so these are the, the, the tweaks that you can make uh, in Medtronic uh, versus in Tandem Pump. You can just push a button for uh, exercise, saying that I'm exercising right now, so keep me a little bit higher. Um, uh, versus Medtronic, you just basically need to keep your uh, low threshold a little bit higher. So um, uh, these are uh, the important features. Again, now we are going to uh, talk about uh, when actually uh, you get kicked out from um, the auto mode, and that is a fact uh, because these are designed to be safe, and uh, you may be kicked out. Uh, in both closed loop systems uh, to uh, open loop system, which is requiring you to basically check your finger stick uh, if there's a problem with the sensor and so forth, which we will discuss that uh, in a second. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the kick out process. Now, one thing that I like about guys with the tandem pumps is that you do not necessarily get kicked out unless you do not have any sensor data coming in. That is because Dexcom is approved to make clinical decisions. As long as you see a number on the Dexcom, as long as you see an arrow up or down, um, you can make a clinical decision. Now, the basic problem with the Medtronic sensor, unfortunately, it is still not approved by the FDA to make clinical decisions. So you will find yourself doing finger six multiple times. It could be at least two, but if not four or more, you, you may end up doing three, four, five uh, in, uh, finger, finger six a day in order to be able to stay within uh, the, um, the closed loop system. And if you do not do the finger stick, uh, since um, the sensor data is not approved just for the, um, the clinical decision making, you will be forced uh, to be out of the closed loop system. Um, so closed loop system will adjust your basal insulin delivery, but anytime in Medtronic, if the sensor thinks that the sensor is kind of off, uh, you will be asked to enter a blood sugar. If you do not do a finger stick, then you're gonna be out. You're gonna be in a basal, safe basal mode, uh, which gives you, uh, you know, the standard basal rate. And um, and if you are uh, really not following the instruction, within I think 90 minutes you're out. And until you enter a blood sugar, you're not getting back in to uh, the closed loop system. Now, the problem with the systems is if you're not in the closed loop, and if you're basal insulin is not being adjusted, you're not you are not really going to get the benefit. So just remember that. 
Now, also, uh, the Medtronic will kick you out. If your blood sugar is more than 300 for more than an hour, that means that the pump basically failed to keep your blood sugar down, or the pump does not trust the sensor readings, eventually it's gonna ask you to say, hey, what's your blood sugar? If your blood sugar is really 300 more than an hour, you should do something about it. If you check your pump, check your uh, infusion set, check your blood sugar, make sure you don't have any ketones. Uh, Medtronic just panics on, on that regard. It's just uh, built uh, extremely safely, uh, but it can be annoying sometimes to be extremely safe. Um, and uh, so the, the other feature with the Medtronic is that, you know, if you are more than uh, 250 for a couple hours, again, I believe that's three hours. Uh, again, for the safety, uh, they make sure that you check your ketones, they make sure you check your blood sugar. And if you don't do blood sugar check and enter it, um, you may not be able to get back in. Uh, and if your blood sugars are remaining high, if you're not able to control that with a uh, in infusion set change or, or, a, or a subcutaneous injection of some sort of correction that brings your blood sugar down, then uh, you're not just gonna be able to get back in. Um, and if your blood sugars are rapidly changing, uh, that's one time that you don't wanna do calibration. So um, if there is more than 35% change between the sensor reading and the blood sugar reading, your pump will not accept that. We'll say this is way too confusing, I'm out, and it's gonna kick you out, and then you're gonna be uh, in the dark. Uh, you, then you have to handle it yourself, the pump is, is not helping you. Um, now, is, they are doing that for a safety feature, uh, but you really be actively hands-on involved in following what the pump says. And if you're not the type of person who is willing to do finger sticks and blood sugar checks, a Medtronic pump is not gonna be the best pump for you, just so you know. Uh, if you're motivated, uh, it, it can be a good pump, uh, but, but if you're not, um, uh, at this point, uh, blood sugar checks are required for you to make a clinical decision. Um, and, uh, and as a rule of thumb, guys, uh, you always calibrate with any any CGM device. You always calibrate when your blood sugars are stable. Don't try to calibrate after you eat or don't try to calibrate when you feel like you're low, you're sweating or something, that you have symptoms of low blood sugars. Uh, you don't want to really make calibrations when the blood sugars are rapidly changing in your system.